I want to make sure that we're not just in an echo chamber here. We're not just talking to ourselves. So I'm bringing on Deepak. someone who I suspect is more reasonable than Joe Biden. I hope he's more reasonable than Joe Biden. This would be David Pakman. Uh, David, David D. Pack uh, the Packer. Talk David the Pakman Packster. And radio. David, thank you for coming back to the show. The, the first time went so well, I had to come back for seconds. I knew it. That's, I, that's, that's why we invited you back. And listen, I... Love I'm, you. I was disheartened to see that Joe Biden and Jen Psaki would not condemn the protests at all hours outside of the justices' homes and residential neighborhoods before their families. I suspect, I mean, I mean this sincerely, I'm not being facetious at all. I suspect you are more reasonable than the staffers at the White House now. Can we at least agree this is bad? It is bad to protest outside of Supreme Court justices' homes. Well, so do, do you, I suspect you want to have a good faith conversation about this. Is that a fair assessment so it we is. can speak freely here? You're not just looking to play gotcha here. I'm not. No, I, I, I'm okay, not. All right, That's so, not what we do on the show. So let's see. Um, I This is not a protest technique I would employ, right? But I have a large platform online where I'm going to reach way more people than going to anybody's house. So like my personal thing is I, this is not a protest technique I would employ. Let's go through like legality, morality, ethics, et cetera. Yeah. Anything that is a criminal act, like a Molotov cocktail, uh, destruction of property, what, whatever, it should be reported. If there's a crime, people should be charged. If you can get a guilty, guilty verdict, they should be you know, sentenced, fine. Very, very good. Yeah. In terms of the speech aspect of this, you know, there's this case from the 90s, Madsen v. Women's Health Center, which found that it's okay for anti-choice protesters to go and protest outside the homes of just random workers at abortion clinics, okay? Now, that's not my opinion. That's a decision that exists. Yeah. Those are quite literally private citizens. They're just like medical workers, right? So if that's okay and we have a First Amendment, certainly showing up and protesting isn't against the law. Are you and I on the same page about that piece? No, because in the U.S. Code, wait, what? 18 U.S. Code section 1507, the law, the federal law, explicitly prohibits protesting outside of the homes of judges with the intention of influencing their decisions. So if the they were- The decision has been done though. No, it hasn't. The, the decision hasn't come out. There was a- Is that actually tr true? Are you, is it, wait, where are my lawyers in chat? Is it illegal to pro- Now, to be clear, I super am against um, protesting outside judge houses because I don't think that you should be influencing the decisions that way. But um, is it actually, that seems really strange if that's true. Where is eSports Batman or where are my legal flare people at? Is it illegal to protest outside federal judge house? Let's find out. The idea is that you can't be interfering with their decision making. Just read the law. Whoever with the intent of interfering with, obstructing, or impeding the administration of justice, or the intent of influencing any judge, juror, witness, or court officer, the discharge of his duty pickets or parades in or near a building housing a court of the United States, or in or near a building or residence occupied or used by such judge, juror, witness, or court officer, with such intent uses any sound truck or similar device or resorts to other demonstrations in or near such a building or shall be fined under the title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. Okay, so it seems to be illegal. That seems to be pretty straightforward. Scones and others cry foul of every way. Democrats have been forced to top spot. The White House saying support uh, despite support rights. Okay, as long as they're peaceful. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, meanwhile, cited protests outside his own home. There's protests three or four times a week outside my house, Schumer said Tuesday. The American way to peacefully protest, okay, well, but you're not a federal judge. While protest is indeed ingrained in America, legally speaking, the comparison between protection and member judiciary at home is inexact. The experts say the latter category of protests are, is probably illegal? Is it really probably illegal? It seems pretty straightforward, no? The current protests at Justice Homes qualify under the statute and the statute of tests would probably be found constitutional. The statute would seem to apply both because they appear to be picketing and parading with the relevant attention. I don't know. While the Supreme Court has rarely dealt with a specific statute, it has upheld similar ones. The court upheld a local Wisconsin law banned protesting targeted at a specific home as long as the protests were allowed to march through a neighborhood. Two decades earlier, in 1965, the court upheld the federal law's prohibition on picketing a court. Law's 
act to demand an outcry for allies coming from you, depending on picketing federal courthouses. Huh. Okay. Leaked draft of the opinion. So I, I would agree with you. It's not clear that they were in violation of the law if the decision had already come out and they were just expressing their anger. But because the decision has not come out, because it seems clear to me that the protesters are trying to change the, the course of how this decision is going to come and try to bring political pressure, to me it seems quite clear this is a violation of federal law. Almost certainly. No, no law lawyer I've spoken to says that this is against any law unless, unless some specific, you know, if there even if even something as relatively benign as a noise ordinance, let's say there's a noise ordinance. No, I, I well, if there's any lawyers in chat that want to push back or agree with this, I, that seems like a very strange reading. It seems this, the law seems pretty un unambiguous here. The reason why people are protesting is to try to change the opinion before it's finalized. And they're protesting outside of a federal judge's house. And there's been prior cases, state law in the past that have upheld similar things. It seems pretty, it seems pretty open and closed here no but don't people protest at the scotus all the time apparently you're not allowed to i don't know if they you can protest afterwards but um p dubs what the fuck did the lawyers he speak to not read the law at all hard thing is proving the intent and whether the law is constitutional well what the end would it really be hard to prove intent here i don't know hmm that starts at 10 p.m. Yeah. If it's 11 and you're being loud, okay, but, now but we have something to talk about. But there's, there's, I, I'm no, not that, that's not to the any law that I'm. Who says there's any law being broken here? That that is the law. I mean, the viewers are free to go check it out. But that that is a very specific law. There's also there's actually a Virginia statute too. But I'm just talking about the federal law. Doesn't First Amendment give a right to protest? Okay, hold on. This is something that I've learned over the Roe v. Wade shit. Okay. The, I, the, okay, I'm pretty sure I've said this a million times on stream. If I've ever said this before, it's wrong, okay? You do not have any guaranteed rights that are unobstructable by the government. You, there's no such thing as an unlimited right. All of your rights can have restrictions um, depending on how narrowly tailored a law is, you know, relating to a particular right. So yeah, you have a First Amendment right to protest, sure, but there's gonna be like limitations or restrictions on that depending on what we're talking about, right? Pisco, we are protesting, show the world our outrage not to influence, says pro says protester, and how would you respond? Well, I think outrage would come after a decision, not before, no? Otherwise, and then also, why would you be protesting outside of a judge's home before the decision is finalized? Huh. Like, I don't know, I, like, this doesn't feel like the the actual malice shit where you would have to prove, like, at some insane standard that they were trying to influence a decision. It seems like it would be pretty, like, easily assessed. But maybe not, who knows, I don't know. I don't know if that specific law has ever been tried. Apparently that specific law has never been tested before. But. 18 USC 1507, you can look it up. Now you might say, well, I don't like that law. I don't think it's just, I, just I think don't it's think a violation. It's applicable here in, I just don't think it's applicable at the homes of these individuals in Virginia based on lawyers I've spoken to. Neither you or I are lawyers, so we may just be- But I can read the law. I mean, the, further. the statute is plain. Are, are you saying that you don't think that the, the protesters are seeking to influence the decision? I haven't spoken to them, so I really can't say, but well, I You can hear what my, they're saying, my, right? What's that? You can hear the sort of things that they're chanting. They're not saying- I actually have not heard what they're chanting. I have not, okay. I, I don't know what they're, what are they chanting? You tell me. They're chanting, my body, my choice. They're chant. They're chanting, uh, you know- My body, my choice isn't change the the, the decision. Of course it is. That's they're, just their opinion, right? My body, my choice. They're, they're chanting in support of the of the ruling that will be overruled by the Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization case. Listen, hey, listen. I think that if we want to get into the minutia of this at the legal level, yeah. I think you would have a hard time arguing that legally saying my body, my choice is equivalent to saying change your decision. So I don't know David, that this what, is the why, why would, What would they be doing outside of the justices' homes? Yeah, outside of that specific area. Out Otherwise, out. why wouldn't you just be protesting in any other random area? Why would you be outside a justice's house? It seems like there is a pretty stated goal there, no? After a leaked Expressing opinion. Expressing their opinion. I mean, listen, but, but legally, right. their, their I don't opinion. think you're gonna win on that. I don't think you're gonna win on legally they were breaking the law because they said my body, my choice. It seems very weak. No, D David, they're not merely saying my body, my choice, and they're not merely posting some opinion online. They're going to the homes of these people. The, actually, the group that sent them, it's called Ruth Sent Us. They said that this is an unacceptable attack on women and LGBT, and we need to force them, right? That was the key word. We need to force them 
to change their views using a diversity of tactics. And we would acknowledge that peaceful protesting is just one tactic, so it seems like they're calling for other things. But, but well, even that word force, but, but what, is, now, what is that word force? Michael, now you're blending, now you're saying, well, they've used peaceful protesting, but they're calling for other things. No, 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 and but that, so they've broken the, that I mean, isn't I, my, I, I that know. isn't my problem. No, no, I mean, I think that that is a separate issue. But the very fact that the organization that sent, I'm sorry, but you brought you yeah, yeah, no, that, in this conversation. That's that's a problem as well, that they're calling for a diversity okay. of tactics. But the chief okay. problem that we're discussing here is that the organization that is taking responsibility for sending the mobs to the justices homes says we need to force them to change their minds. We need to force them to not attack at women and LGBT and all, all of the would other. Would you ever go on the Knowles uh, show? You wanted me to, yeah, sure. Discussing. So even the word force would suggest to me that that they are attempting to influence the decision. And I like I have like my own personal moral positions on this, but assuming the law is functioning as it's written, I would super agree with the law. The I'm peace gone. I'm pretty sure you would too. Um, I don't think the idea of protesting outside of a judge's house. I think is really, really, really bad. I think that sets a really bad precedent um, because our judicial is supposed to be separate from like political influence. The judicial is supposed to be ruling based on the merits of the case and their individual judicial framework and, and what they were like. That's that's ideally supposed to be how the judicial works. The idea that like any particular decision could be influenced based on where protests that show up or whatever, I feel like that's supposed to happen on the political, on the lawmaker side of things, not on the judicial side of things. Um, so like if you want to go protest outside like a senator or a representative's house or a state or local official or whatever, or even like a mayor or governor, I think that's fine. Um, but you would, yeah, you'd support protesting outside Congress and support of impeaching judges. And yeah, sure. If you wanted to, cause you're protesting the lawmakers. Those are the ones that are supposed to bend their whims to like political influence. Right. Um, yeah, fair. But the question is, does the conduct violate the law? And does the law violate the constitution? Everything else is policy memes. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I guess whether the, I don't know if it's gone to the Supreme court or not, but. Therefore, or it are in violation of this law. Yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to skirt the main point you're trying to make, which I am unsure I can identify. But I haven't seen that specific said, Jesus. so it's just hard for me to comment on it. What okay. I think, All what right. I can. You're pleading, you're is, pleading, uh, pleading ignorance on this point. No, but, I'm not pleading ignorance. But what, what I, what I can speak to is, if any crime has been committed, charge them. Okay. I'm totally okay. with that. I'm totally with that. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Do you, do you think now, from your perspective, as a reasonable Democrat, if you were advising Democrats... I'm not a Democrat. I've never been associated with the Democratic Party. Really? What, yeah. Are you in any party, or you're just independent? No. Yeah, I'm just independent. Would you... You would generally vote for Democrats, I would assume. I vote for more Democrats than Republicans. I don't care about parties, though. I see parties essentially almost like corporations that justify their own existence to just continue existing in opposition to the other other party. Do you do you really vote for Republicans? There are rights that are absolute. They can't be infringed. The right to not be enslaved. The right to not be tortured. Look up Juice Kogan's norms. Um, is that true? What, wouldn't it depend on how we define enslaved or torture? Like, wouldn't we say state prisons are a form of enslavement if you're like working there? No, or? But I, maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. Pisco says, destiny literally no. There's an exception to the slavery clause. The 13th amendment literally says you can be enslaved. Oh, okay, well. Oh, accept this punishment for a crime, maybe. Yeah. I voted well, for many. In, there's lots of nonpartisan local elections. Okay. Where I later found out some of the people were not Democrats, but I mean, it's kind of neither here nor there. Okay. So, but you're not formally in the Democrat Party. If you were advising a Democratic candidate or any candidate for that sure. matter who sure. is on the left, would you advise them to continue running on this issue of abortion, on this issue of? Uh, well, for instance, the bill that the Democrats last night tried to pass, it failed in the Senate. You absolutely should. I think abortion is still relatively popular in the United States. I think this is a winning issue for Democrats. Um, it seems like something you can push into. Unless there's polling data that is different that I'm not aware of or something. To, they said it was to codify Roe versus Wade. It actually went further to create even more abortion protections. Would you advise them to run on this issue in the midterms or to back away from it in the midterms? I so run on it. I think that there's two from a political strategy standpoint, there's two options. One would be run on the bill that failed yesterday. 
that doesn't seem like a good idea to run on that. Yeah. Um, I, I think where there is, based on pu public opinion about abortion being as in favor of it as ever before during the Roe v. Wade era, public polling is now in the 60, 70 percent of Americans believe abortion should generally be legal in most cases, that, that not in every case, but in most cases. Based on that, it seems to me it would be prudent to run on. We need to get the government out of medical decisions between women and doctors. I mean, and again, you're, I, you and I are never going to agree on something like, when does life begin? That's a different, I, well, we're we might agree on that. I, you know, I had a well, gal who came. Whoa, whoa, hold on, but let yeah. me at least finish my sentence. Sure. You asked me about strategy. It seems to me that since most Americans think abortion should be legal in most cases, the right strategy thing would be, we need to get the federal government out of in the middle of these medical decisions. But but right now, if you if you let, let's say that the leaked opinion actually ends up being the final decision, let's say that Roe v. Wade sure. is overruled instantly, as Elizabeth Warren says, abortion is severely restricted, if not outlawed, in more than half of the states. Instantly, you you've, you you've, you're in a very different situation. Sure. Knowing that the there are all sorts of polls. There's polls that show that. 94% of Americans reject the absolutist view of abortion held by some Democrats. There are polls, as you cite, that show that when you ask the question, do you support Roe versus Wade broadly, then there is some majority of Americans that broadly want some abortion uh, liberality. Uh, yeah, so, but so, Michael, that's very mealy mouth. I mean, let's, it is let's, very let's, mealy -mouth. Just, let's right. just be honest. Ask the same way over the last 50 years, support for Roe v. Wade has continued to go up. Fair? That's true, but you have to be careful what type of legislation you're pushing. Now, I haven't seen that Senate Dem bill, but if you're pushing for unrestricted abortion, I don't think the majority of Americans support that. Like, regardless of what your personal feelings are, I don't think a lot of people are comfortable with third trimester abortions. If somebody has polling data to the city, obviously, go ahead and link me. But I don't think, like, when you talk about, like, Roe v. Wade, um, Roe v. Wade, fuck, I need to look these up again. I think Roe v. Wade carves out that like third trimester is probably not okay. Now, I think K Casey might technically overrule that, but, um, or over, or, or go further than that. But um, this is exactly what happened in the vote. What was the Senate Dem bill? Were they trying to do like unrestricted? Because I don't think the majority of Americans are on board with that. Abortion poll. You think abortion should be legal under any circumstances, legal only under under certain circumstances, or illegal in all circumstances? So legal under any circumstances at 32%. Legal under only certain circumstances at 48%. Oof. And then illegal in all circumstances at 19%. With respect to the abortion issue, would you consider yourself to be pro-choice or pro-life? 49, 47. 49 pro-choice, 47 pro-life. I don't think most women themselves are comfortable with third-term abortions. It would be a huge mindfuck to abort something you could already feel. More. Yeah, probably. That's probably true. Yeah, unless there's like um, some crazy shit going on. Here's the actual bill. Oh. Hmm. Wait, so is there anything in here about like, is this just like an unrestricted thing or? It removes all restrictions. Why, like this just seems like a, why would you do a bill like this? Like, if you're going to do legislation, why not at least, like, guarantee, like, up to second trimester legislatively and then let the states fight over third trimester? Because I feel like that's such an... Destiny, why would you try that? Why would you try wh what? No, like, federally guarantee, like, up to second trimester abortions and then let the states fight over the third trimester, right? Like, why not just let them do that? This seems like such a 
hardcore like what Americans really think about abortion. Oh, 538 article. Because Schumer is an idiot. Well, would uh, would Mansion or Cinema have supported second trimester? Maybe they're hoping to open with a really strong bill and then let it get chopped down. Well, why? Why? Okay, I could be wrong. Somebody email me if my strategy is incorrect here, but I don't think it's good strategy. This is like the Jimmy Dore shit. I don't think it's good strategy to fuck up a whole bunch of bills. <laughs> like, oh, we tried some really strong bills that all got fucking voted down and fucked. Now we're going to open with a real bill. I don't think it works that way, guys. I don't think it's like fucking art of the deal trying to buy a car. Manchin said he would support codified Roe v. Wade. If Manchin said he would support code... Oh, no. I'm an idiot, Never mind. For legislation like this, you would either have to kill the filibuster or get 60 votes, wouldn't you? So it, so maybe it doesn't matter, right? You you need 60 votes on this to, so th th this is all, this is dead in the water. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, well, this all, none of this matters then. <laughs> There are some Republicans that support abortion. Are there some that would be willing to vote in the Senate on an abortion bill? <laughs> There's a big difference between what they've said, what some Republicans support, and what people would be willing to vote on in the Senate. All of those things, those are three very, very, very different questions. Um, hold on one second. Okay. Well, it depends how you ask the question. If you ask, ask the the same way over the last 50 right. years, if, if you ask, that it has gone up. If you ask the question in a way that is, uh, I think, hiding the reality of abortion and is just talking about the decision, Roe versus Wade, then uh, <laughs> sure, there's broad support for it. But if you but if you ask the question and you say, do you support this type of abortion? Do you support this type of abortion? Do you support? Then the support is much right, much smaller. See, this is, is this is why the, the bill failed yesterday. You're creating distinctions only to create doubt when the, the point I'm making is over the last 50 years, generally overall, should abortion generally be legal in most cases? But the, Support but the, has gone up. But the, you can admit that and still be against it. No, like. but David, the, the problem is the devil is in the details because I, I mean, I've got a poll right here that, that- It is true that the devil is in the details. This is something progressives need to fucking learn. You have to stop polling on vague bullshit and hoping that that's gonna be enough to get popular support for legislation. It didn't work for Medicare for all. It's not working with student loan debt. Like it. Like, you, you have to be more precise about what you're asking. You have to be honest about what people are actually willing to settle for, what people are willing to accept. If you're not willing to be honest about that, you're not gonna have a snowball's chance in hell of getting any real meaningful legislation passed. It goes into depth on different aspects of abortion polling that, I'm not depending on how you change the, with you, depending I'm... on how you phrase the question, it, you get very different answers. So I guess my point is this. According to some of this polling, very few, yeah. very few voters and very, very few independent voters okay. w support abortion as a top policy issue. It, it does not seem to motivate a whole lot of people to go to the polls. Oh, fair. I would agree with that. So I agree that, with that. So therefore, in that case, if you were advising these candidates, w you know, you, you might say, okay, just keep using the same lines that Democrats have used since Roe versus Wade. But if you were talking about focusing a campaign, I think there are a lot of Democrats right now who say, we're going to run on this. This is going to motivate everyone to go to the polls. Make your campaign about abortion. Would you say that's a good strategy or would you say, hey, maybe back off a little bit and talk about, I don't know, gas prices? No, no, no. I don't think that's a good strategy. I mean, again, th this is less about my opinion, but it's about what the facts show. The facts show that economic issues are far more important when it comes to running national campaigns. So, I, I mean, no disagreement. I don't think that's true. I used to believe this, but it's that's I don't think that's true. People feel very, very strongly about some social issues. Now, that's not to say that like at this particular point in time, people do or people don't. But I think it's a it is a campaign mistake to think that the only thing people care about are economic issues. There are people that will become single issue voters around like certain types of social affairs. Uh, that's that's important to know. There, these are these are just strategy questions. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. There's also there was polling that came out yesterday that showed that on the abortion question, in as much as it does motivate people, it's actually it, the Roe v. Wade overruling seems to be uh, propelling Republicans at om almost two x the rate as uh, Democrats. So anyway, I, listen, I knew, David, I knew that you would be much more reasonable 
then uh, Joe Biden. Uh, David, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for coming on, though, as always. Oh, my God, it's over. We haven't even talked about anything we've, yet. We've got, well, I, no, I think, I think uh, as I, I gave you a compliment, but uh, th thankfully that's missing, too. I, I think that you've uh, presented a more reasonable view than the White House has. I think you've presented better political advice than the White House has for their own party. And so I appreciate you for coming on. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, DavidPackman.com. I can't imagine a more meaningful compliment and praise than that coming from you, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> David, thanks for coming on.